Hello and welcome to another video. Now this question is not a calculus question, it's a pre-algebra question, so I will not be doing any differentiating or integrating, but we'll be doing a ton of algebra and I want you to know it's going to be very plain, simple, and you will understand it. If you understand it, remember to leave a comment in the comment section and give this video a like, give it a share, subscribe if you really want to get more videos from me, and let's get down to it. This is a field, a typical field that has a rectangle in the middle, has um, a semicircle on either ends, and the radius of the semicircle is r. See, there are no numbers right now apart from this, which we're going to come back to use. And you have the sides of the rectangle um, are each x. And the first thing we're supposed to do is to find the area in terms of r only. Well, let's not get ourselves worked up. Let's just get the total area. Something we learned from elementary school, when you're asked to find the total area of a shape that is already broken down for you, it's gonna be the area of this semicircle plus the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. So let's just um, write that out. So let's say that the area of the semicircle, well, we know the formula, okay? Uh, the area of a circle is supposed to be pi r squared, but half of that would be half, one half pi r squared. So the total area, we can say area will be equal to one half pi r squared plus the area of the rectangle is um, length times breadth. Now, however, this one is not r. You see, this, from here to here is the radius because it's part of a semicircle, but there are two of them. So the height of this rectangle is going to be 2r. So the area is going to be um, length times width, which is x times 2r, which would be 2rx. OK, rx sounds like a pharmacy kind of stuff. Let's go. OK, plus 1 half of pi r squared. So we have this, we have this, we have this. That's our total area. Um, can we add these two together? Yes. So let's put them together. 1 half plus 1 half gives you 1, so it's going to be pi r squared plus 2rx. See, that's the answer to the first question. The only problem is that we don't want x in the answer. We just want you to write it in terms of r. Okay? Just get rid of this x. But how do we get rid of the x? Because it's the side. However, they give you one condition. The condition is that if you run around this field, you must have run a quarter. Well, it's a quarter mile, but I don't care about the units right now. Okay? So you must have run one quarter of a mile. So it means that if I go around this field, the perimeter of this field is going to be 1 over 4. So in order to get rid of x, we have to find a way to connect I mean, to isolate x, connect x to r using this information, and then isolate x. Whatever we get will be in terms of r, and then we can bring it here and replace this. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to write here, but what's the perimeter of a semicircle? OK, now this is where we have to clean things up. You notice that when we did area, it was important what this was. But right now, because when you're running around the field, you don't cut through the field, so you don't run this as part of your distance. So the only important part will be just this. So it's as if you're going around a circle, but you never go inside, okay? So the perimeter of this added to this is like going around a circle. It's just that the circles have now been separated. Look at this, this is beautiful. It's as if you separated this circle by two straight lines. You just moved one part off. That's what you have here. You stretched it. But it's the same semicircle. So what you have, the perimeter actually, 
is 2 pi r. Okay, that's the perimeter of this added to this. And remember that for a rectangle, the perimeter is supposed to be x plus x plus 2r plus 2r. But like I said, see 2r plus 2r, but like I said, you never cut through this part of the field. So you go straight, you go through x, then you make a curve, you go through x, you make a curve. So it's going to be x plus x plus this curve plus this curve. And remember, this curve plus this curve is one circle, and then you have 2x. You ignore the middle portions because you don't cut through it. So let's now write this and say, but the perimeter will be equal to just this plus this, which will be 2 pi r plus 2x. That's it. It's just 2 pi r plus 2x. So at this point, we can solve it and it's equal to a quarter mile. So I don't like fractions generally. I don't like seeing them when I'm doing algebra because they can actually make you get answers wrong. So let's get rid of this fraction. And the easiest way to do that is to multiply each of these terms by 4. If I multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, I'm going to end up with 8 pi r plus 8x equals 1 because this will be gone and I've multiplied each of the terms by 4. So what's left? Let's just isolate x, okay? So I'm going to have 8x will be 1 minus 8 pi r and x will be 1 minus 8 pi r over 8. So at this point, I'm done with the first part of the question. I just need to go plug in 1 minus 8 pi r in here for x. So let's do that. So we're going to say area will be equal to pi r squared um, plus Two, where is it? Plus 2r multiplied by 1 minus 8 pi r over 8. If we open this, well, you could leave this as the answer if, I don't know, but it doesn't look beautiful. Okay, so let's simplify and make it easier on the eyes. So this is going to be 8, no, sorry, it's going to be pi r squared. So this is pi r squared plus. Now, if you multiply 2r by 1 and you divide it by 8, you're going to get r over 4. I hope you see that. Okay? Minus. If you multiply 2r by 8 pi r, it's going to give you 16 pi r squared. If you divide it by 8, it's going to be 2 pi r squared. So... Let's add this to this and have this. You're going to end up with pi r squared minus 2 pi r squared is going to be negative pi r squared. Negative pi r squared plus r over 4. That's it. And that's your area. Let's go to the next question. Okay, so I cheated a little because I quickly wrote this. I just wanted to save time. Okay, let's save some time. So um, the second part of the question tells you um, to find the maximum area. Firstly, how do they know it's going to be maximum? Why are we always not talking about minimum and we're talking about maximum? Why do we always talk about maximum and not minimum? Well, as pre-calc student or in your algebra and your study of um, parabolic functions, you know that when the coefficient of r squared, you see this is the variable, and this is the variable, 
Okay, remember that in every fun function, if you have f of x, let me not use y. If you have a function where f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, this is a parabola, okay? And if a is positive, your function will always be a minimum function, which means it will have a minimum, okay? But if a is negative, it will be a maximum. Now, where the maximum will occur, you don't know, but it will always, this will always open downwards, and this will open upwards if A is positive. If A is negative, like what we have here, our A is negative, it has to always be like this, and there's going to be a maximum. So that's why the question specifies, specifies that you should look for the maximum. What is the maximum? Okay? So... And you know what we have to do is find the equation of the vertex because when you find the vertex line right here, it will tell you what this value will be on the corresponding y value. That's all you have to do. Okay, so we have to rewrite or imagine this question as if it was um, ax squared plus b x plus c. In this case, our c is 0 because there's no c. Now our b is 1 over 4 and a is negative pi. See, it corresponds with that. This is as if you write z plus 0. So c is 0. We don't need it. So what is the equation of the vertex line? Let's do that. Remember, I'm going to erase this, okay? Remember that at the vertex, okay, Let's, let's put it this way. Maximum area is um, at the vertex. Okay? The maximum area is at the vertex. And the vertex is this point. Is the point where you have minus b over 2a. And this has to be f of minus b over 2a. Whatever that is, that's your maximum area, and this is the value of the variable at the maximum area. So we just need to find this value, get that value, plug it back in here, and we're good. Let's do it. Okay, so I want to have enough space to finish this because I don't want to erase it. Okay, um... Under here, I'm just going to squeeze in the details that we have. Just put it here. Let me use another color or chalk. Let's say um, b equals negative pi. No, b is 1 over 4, rather. b is 1 over 4. So a equals negative pi, and b equals 1 over 4. That's all we need. So now we're going to say... Um, vertex, let's erase this, okay, vertex is at the point minus 1 over 4 over 2a, 2a will be 2 times negative pi, that's negative 2 pi, okay, and the other value, which would be this, the function, will be, uh, it means we have to go plug in this number into, you know what, I'm just going to write f of negative, if you simplify this actually, this is going to be 1 over 8 pi, 1 over 8 pi, I'm just going to leave it that way, so in case you don't know what this means, this is the answer, because if you simplify this, let me do it somewhere in the corner, um, here you're going to have negative 1 over 4 divided by negative 1 over 2 divided by negative 2 pi rather, that's negative 1 over 4 times 1 over 2 pi, negative. So negative times negative will cancel out, you get positive, and this is 1 over 8 pi. So that's why I have that here, it's exactly what is here, okay? Don't lose that. Don't lose track of yourself. Come on. Okay, so how do we get the vertex? What is f of 1 over, one over 8 pi? We just have to take this value and plug it in for R, okay? Um, we have to do some algebra. You know, I'm just going to create a section here and say that area maximum 
will be equal to, I'll put in this equation now, it will be negative pi multiplied by 1 over 8 pi squared. You see, it's negative pi r squared. So our r is this. Okay, remember this equation, we're solving it in terms of r. So it's going to be this. That's how I li like to solve mine. Okay, and we go to plus 1 over 4, 1 over 4. R, R is still 1 over 8 pi times 1 over 8 pi, okay? You got to do the math. You got to do it, okay? So at this point, what I have is, if you square this, that's going to be 1 over 64 pi squared. Oh, that's negative pi over 64 pi squared plus 1 over 32 pi this is going to be negative 1 over 64 pi plus 1 over 32 pi. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did you just see that? What's the answer? Well, what's the least common multiple? The least common multiple is going to be 64 pi. So this is negative 1 plus 2. That's 1. Me love this. That's your maximum area. Is there any R in this picture? There is no R. That's the maximum area. 1 over 64 pi. That's B-E-A. Beautiful. If you learned something in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, never stop learning. Because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.